and welcome back to another HR1 product reviews. And today we're checking out OnePlus's new Explore backpack. Let's check it out. All right, so today we're checking out the new OnePlus Explore backpack by OnePlus. So this is kind of an invite only bag that they're selling right now. Um, if you are lucky enough to get one of the invite codes, this bag will run you $99. I was lucky enough to snag one of the invite codes, so let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. So as you can see, the bag does come, or excuse me, the backpack does come in this cool little bag. Um, it's kind of see-through, it's mesh, but if you look here at the top, um, there are little handles that you can pull up, so you can definitely carry this around as like a tote. Um, you may even completely take it out and store it in the bag. But without further ado, let's get to the bag. Alright, and here is the bag. So pretty standard backpack. I wouldn't say there's anything too special about it just now. Um, pretty typical size. I would not I would say it's maybe a little bit larger than your average Jansport backpack, but other than that, nothing else. Let's just kind of take a look at all the different sides of the bag. So here's the back of it. These little straps here that kind of pull the bag tighter do feel really high quality. Um, overall, the whole bag does feel pretty high quality. Um, the whole bag is water resistant, so you can, you know, kind of step out in the rain and not really feel too worried. Um, speaking of the water resistance, this pocket right up here, right in the front, is actually completely waterproof. So whatever you stick inside of this compartment right here actually won't damage or um, get any of the rest of the parts of the inside of the bag wet. So you can feel free to stick like a wet umbrella or something like that and then not have to worry about it getting the rest of the floor wet or anything else. So that's really nice. And then here they have a little vent hole just so you don't accumulate, you know, water moisture in there for too long or have it go moldy. Moving on to the side here. Um, here's one of the secondary storage compartments on the outside of the bag. And as you can see, it's pretty deep. I took my whole hand in there. Pretty deep storage compartment. One thing I will say is that this bag does lack any type of secondary storage. So, you know, a lot of bags will have pockets within pockets just so you can help organize some of that. And this bag is definitely missing a lot of that. Moving here to the back. Pretty standard backpack look. The padding here is padded, but very light. So you're not gonna get any type of extreme padding with this bag, which is kind of nice. Sometimes some bags kind of overdo it on the padding. And then here you'll find your typical luggage pass-through. Um, really nice that they added that. A lot of backpacks are kind of adding that luggage pass-through. Um, this is, bag is definitely, based on the price, built more for professionals or people on the go. So uh, luggage pass-through is definitely gonna be a must, especially for myself. On this side, you're going to find a small little drink holder. Uh, I say small little drink holder because you'll probably only be able to carry maybe a standard sized water bottle in here. Um, nothing too much bigger, just because it max, maxes out on what it can carry. So don't expect to take too many drinks on, on the trip with this. And then the last uh, pocket here on the outside is going to be here on the side. So in OnePlus, this promotional video, they show you kind of sticking a OnePlus cell phone in here and kind of easy access to it. Um, it's definitely a big deep pocket. Um, I have an iPhone XS Max here for comparison. And uh, if you put the phone in here, um, there's definitely still space for maybe even another phone or some other material. So you don't want to have to stick a phone in here. But um, what I do like is that this pocket here sits really close and flush to your back. So when you're traveling, this could be really nice as like a passport pocket or maybe uh, money or any other type of personal document pocket for yourself. Alright, so let's check out the front. So now we're going to take a look, uh, excuse me, so now we're going to take a look at the main storage compartment. And uh, one thing that OnePlus is really trying to kind of boast up here is their cool little locking mechanism. So I'll show you right now. You pull the tab and it unlocks. And then you can get quick access to your bag and if you want to lock it again you just kind of close it shut and the bag's locked. So you have to pull, lift up, and then to unzip the bag, the zipper actually starts all the way up here. And then you can pull down, and then unzip, and it unzips basically from the bottom up. So you get a big wide mouth opening. I'm a big fan of that. I like the wide mouth opening because what it means is when you're trying to look for something, you don't have to kind of struggle with it opening either just like this, 
you know, just the top part. Um, you have this huge opening to kind of look through the entire bag and find what you need. And um, the fact that it zips all the way up to the top here, basically we'll be adding to the water resistance because the bag will be zipped all the way closed and then closed over again. And as you heard, it locked. So definitely easy access closed. Um, if you did want to leave it as kind of a side open pocket, you could. Um, I would only recommend that though on like sunny days because you don't want to definitely damage anything on the inside of the bag. So let's unlock it and take another look on the inside. So right here you'll find a laptop sleeve or a tablet sleeve. Uh, this sleeve isn't very wide, but it's definitely wide enough for maybe a 13 to 15 inch MacBook Pro. And then there's only one other pocket on the inside, or excuse me, one other zip pocket on the inside, and that's right here. Uh, so this zip pocket is not very large. Um, it'll probably only hold maybe some smaller cables, a charger or two. Um, if you have some pencils or something like that, I'd recommend it for that. But other than that, this that, that top compartment is just not very big. Now there is one last compartment that I did not show you guys that I totally forgot about. And uh, let me show that to you right now. So close it up. Boom. So here is the last compartment that I meant to show you on the outside. Um, and it's basically the laptop sleeve. I call it the laptop sleeve because this is pretty much where you're going to keep a laptop. Um, one, because it's closest to your back, it's closest to the padding. Um, so as you can see, it's definitely padded here on the back. And a little bit of padding here in the front. Um, so you can definitely throw a laptop in there and not really have to worry about it. Um, like I said, this bag, I just got it in today, so I haven't even had any time to really test it. Uh, so this is more of an unboxing slash quick look of this backpack. Um, but so far, I really like the look of the bag. It's uh, pretty simple looking, um, but I would say it looks a little more elegant than like a backpack that you would find maybe at like your typical Target or Walmart, where it looks a bit upscale. Um, like I said, the water resistance is pretty big, especially if you live in a state that rains a lot or anything like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attempt to kind of load this backpack up a little bit, uh, which is some of the items that I would typically carry with me, and then we'll see what that looks like. So see you back in a bit. So I've gone ahead and loaded up the bag here with just some things that I would carry around if I was going maybe on a short flight. So this is maybe going on a quick day trip to a meeting, um, but definitely not something I would carry overnight. But all of these items would be in the bag regardless of whether I'm going on a long haul flight or a short haul flight. So these are kind of all my must carry items. All except for one and I'll show you that one right now. So here is the uh, all wet compartment and as you can see I fit an umbrella in here. And you can fit a fairly large umbrella. Uh, I mean, not, I wouldn't say this is large at all, but this is one of those tiny mini umbrellas. Uh, so you can definitely fit a good size umbrella in here and not have to worry about it. And again, with the nice part about this lining here is it's completely waterproof, so you won't have to worry about getting any of the other items inside of your bag uh, wet or damaged. So this isn't, like I said, this isn't something I would carry every single time I travel, uh, but I would definitely always check on the weather. So I always check whether or not it's gonna be hot or cold, so I either dress accordingly or I'm prepared. So if I did see it was going to rain, I would definitely leave this compartment empty and put an umbrella in there. Now, if I'm going somewhere and it's going to be sunny the whole time, uh, maybe instead of putting something like that in here, maybe I would fit maybe like a larger water bottle. And let's get to that water bottle now. And one thing I also wanted to show while we're checking out the water bottle is that this bag can stand on its own. Now, please note that this bag doesn't stand on its own by itself. You do have to kind of load it correctly in order for the bag to stand up. Um, I know that's kind of a big feature for a lot of people, so if you're looking for a bag that can stand on its own, this isn't it. Uh, don't be fooled by this. Like I said, I've loaded this bag correctly uh, or to my standard so that it can stand up. Uh, do I think this bag could load, or excuse me, do I think this bag could stand on its own without being loaded like this? I don't think so. Uh, we'll see after I unload it. Well, let's check out that water bottle. So, Here's the water bottle, and as you can see, it does fit, but barely. This barely fits in here. And this is just your standard 16 ounce water bottle. So, good luck getting maybe anything even a bit bigger than that, because as you can see, the strap on here is kind of already maxed out. But, if I was going somewhere where the, the weather was going to be a bit nicer and I didn't need an umbrella, I would have no issue sticking a much larger water bottle into this much larger bag down here. Because if the water bottle maybe wasn't closed all the way or anything like that, I wouldn't have to worry about it spilling. Alright, so next we're going to check out this kind of longer compartment here. 
Um, so like I said, this is more if I'm going to travel. Um, when if I'm going to work or something like that, this bag wouldn't be loaded the way it is. So in this long bag, I just wanted to show you kind of how wide this compartment was. I was able to fit my entire Nintendo Switch on here with a Nintendo Switch official kickstand case. So as you can see, it's basically almost the length of the entire bag. And this pocket is about the length of the entire bag. This switch fits in here no problem. Um, I wouldn't say there's more space in here to put anything else, but there's definitely enough space for a switch. And if you have one of those boxes that carry switch games, I would say that fits on there just fine too. All right, so let's move on to the side pockets. So uh, here in the bigger, longer side pocket, as I mentioned before, what I'm going to put in there, my 13 inch MacBook Pro. So that fits in there just fine. Like I said, there's plenty of space in there for another 15 inch or maybe even a 17 inch notebook. So let's zip that up. And then while we're here on this mini side compartment, as I mentioned before, my phone. So this is an iPhone XS Max. I've also fit my passport. So let's put that to the side. All right. So got my passport, my phone, my umbrella, a water bottle, and my switch. So as you can see, it's not a ton of items, but it's still enough to kind of keep this bag going. But I've gotten everything out of the side pockets. Now let's check out what I put in the main front pocket. I like doing that. That's a lot of fun to kind of unzip it and zip it back up. Boom. So next up, all those Apple products and Switch products going to need charging. So this is a Gridit organizer. Uh, what I like about this is you can fit pretty much anything, um, whatever cable size, this will kind of fit to torque to fit any dimensions. So as you can see, I have chargers, iPad chargers and everything in here. Pretty sweet. Let's see what else is in here. And let's check out what's in this smaller pocket. So first up, power bank. So this is the Tesla wireless power bank. I would not recommend this. Uh, it's pretty slow to charge and it only holds about 6,000 milliamps and it costs $50. You can definitely find uh, much better and cheaper options on Amazon, but I bought this because I thought it looked cool and it's Tesla branded and there aren't a lot of Tesla branded things anymore. So wireless charger. So that's the power bank. Next up in this little pocket, the Pokeball. So this Pokeball came with uh, my Nintendo switches uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu uh, yellow bundle. So I got, like I said, I got it with the Pokeball. Uh, so you can walk around with the Pokeball to carry your Pokemon with you and uh, you know, it'll help earn up XP and stuff like that. So that's kind of fun. So I'll carry this around when I'm walking around somewhere. All right, so next thing here in the bag is AirPods. Uh, so normally I carry these AirPods in my front pocket, uh, but uh, when I'm traveling, if I want to go through TSA a bit quicker, I am known to kind of throw everything in my backpack real quick right before heading through, so AirPods. And uh, last thing here in this tiny little front pocket here is Apple Pencil. Uh, as you'll note, this is the uh, second generation Apple Pencil to go with the second generation or third generation 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So here, here is my 12.9 inch iPad Pro. This is kind of my go-to device. Uh, I'll be honest, since getting the new iPad Pro, I really don't use my MacBook very often anymore. Um, I've even gone to going to switching to filming and editing on my new iPad Pro. All right, so kind of finishing up everything here in the bag now, uh, just a few more items in here. Um, Next thing in here are my Sony wireless noise cancelling headphones. I believe they're the WMX2s. These are the second generation Sony noise cancelling headphones. They work incredibly well uh, for a flight. There's a new third generation out there, but currently I've got that second gen. And the last thing in this bag is sunglasses. Uh, so these are my Snapchat spectacles. I don't use Snapchat very much anymore, but I definitely use the spectacles so I can um, kind of record footage hands-free and then I use the app to pull the footage to then put on Instagram or Instagram stories. All right, so there it is, um, kind of everything I keep in this bag, uh, more or less. Like I said, this is something that I would typically carry on a light travel day. 
Um, on a heavier travel day, honestly, you might just see maybe an additional larger battery bank. So this is more the larger, heavier duty battery bank that I carry around on longer flights, on longer trips. Uh, this is Anchor's 26,800 milliamp uh, bank. This is a solid metal construction. It's very heavy. Uh, I, it adds significant weight, I'll be honest. Um, I would rather have a plastic enclosure to add less weight, but, you know, it's fine. It, it gets the job done. It definitely charges quickly. One of my favorite features of this bank is the USB PD port. And what the USB PD port does is it allows charging, um, fast charging for all iOS devices that allow fast charging. So, really nice. But yeah, other than that, this is kind of what I would carry on a light day. Again, uh, if I'm just going to work, just kind of quick travel, mostly just this, this, the iPad Pro, and umbrella, and Pokeball. Maybe a water bottle. Stay hydrated. All right, so uh, last thing here, I'm going to kind of show you what the bag looks like when I'm wearing it. Um, about 5'5", five five, so let's go ahead and move to that footage. Right. All right, so here I am with the bag. Um, as you can see, uh, it's kind of big, definitely wearing it um, as I would wear it, so a bit higher than kind of my butt, kind of a turtle shell. Like I said, that's how I would normally wear the bag. Luckily, the way the bag is sitting uh, with the two shoulder straps, the padding is enough that I don't feel any stress. And the weight of all those items in my bag is definitely very well evenly distributed. Um, I would say this is a comfortable bag to wear. Um, I do feel like the bag is kind of also keeping me upright. And I can definitely see myself wearing this bag out there on long trips and long hauls. So the way I like to carry my bags, I usually carry around a sling bag so I can kind of sling it front, open it up, get what's inside, and then sling it back around my shoulder. Um, so that's why I'm more of a fan of the sling bags. I'm going to try with this bag and see if I can kind of sling it around, grab what I need, and sling it forward since that pocket does tend to open up just to one side. So we can pull the flap open. Yeah, it's already difficult to, maybe if I drop it a bit and kind of unzipped it here. So it's definitely difficult to grab out of the main compartment like this to sling it over, grab what you need and go. Um, but from the side pocket, I don't see it being more of a problem. Just kind of grabbing something, taking it out, putting it back in. So this isn't going to be maybe a bag that you want to carry um, anything you might want instant access to. But, you know, for school or um, traveling, that could be nice. Um, the only thing that's on here that I might want instant access to, so to speak, is maybe the smaller pocket, which is right here. So remember, this is where that small pocket was, so if you're traveling and you need to grab like a phone and you don't want to carry that in your front pocket, you can have it here. Or, if you're traveling and you want to have a quick access to something, you have access to your passport. So like I said, I like this design for the passport just because if you're traveling, it's a secure spot so you can kind of walk around with your bag, you don't have to worry about you know, if someone kind of starts pickpocketing you or trying to get into your bag. Um, that's maybe another good feature for this backpack is the ability to kind of grab something. And there aren't very many outside visible pockets, so you won't be worried about kind of losing a lot of your items. But overall, that's it. Uh, here's kind of the quick look unboxing of OnePlus's Explorer backpack. Like I said, right now it isn't for purchase for everybody. It's only available to purchase if you have one of their invite codes. So if you are lucky enough to score one of these in my codes and this bag does kind of speak to you, well, feel free to reach out and grab it. Uh, if not, do I recommend the bag when it becomes available to everybody? No. Uh, one of the reasons I don't recommend it is because of the lack of organization within the bag, as well as the lack of usable space. Like I said, there are a lot of big pockets in here, but there aren't a lot of smaller miniaturized compartments that you can store cables or anything like that. And that's kind of a shame, especially with a bag this large. That does it for another H1 product reviews. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. I do product reviews as well as food reviews. Thanks again for watching. Bye.